Hello, Irish Football Fan TV. This is the League of Ireland team of the season, uh, part two or take two, if you're rather, because I messed up. Uh, we're recording this for the second time. I'm joined by Gary Spain, Gerard Brown, and Paul Tierney for this one. And once again, lads, thanks for uh, taking the time out to record this for the second time. But we, um, we're we here to basically discuss the goalkeeper. Uh, Gary, of your kind of top picks, who will be yours? Okay, so I, I, I had a few on the list. I had Brian Murphy of Waterford, I think, had a good season. Ed McGinty of Sligo impressed me quite a bit. Uh, we had, um, well, Bohemians at two, actually, if you take Stephen McGuinness and James Talbot. And, of course, Alan Manis at Shamrock Rovers. So, I know it's a it's a pretty long list, but for me, it was a bit of a no-brainer. I think Alan Manis, I think he conceded seven goals all season. He was absolutely superb. Uh, it had been a problem position for Shamrock Rovers, and since he's come back, I think he's been, look, he's been top class. And... He's one of the mainstays of the team now, and I, I'm sure he'll continue to play again, hopefully for next season from a Rovers point of view. I'm sure they really want him to continue. And for me, this has to be the goalkeeper in the team of the season. Alan Manis. Alan Manis, yeah. Oh, it's your Wi-Fi went in and out there, so I just missed the last bit. Jer, who would be your top? Uh, give me your top three, and then kind of go from three to, to one, if you wouldn't mind. Yeah, so my top three, the three I would have had in consideration, uh, same as Gary, Brian Murphy and Adam Manis are in the conversation, along with Ed McGinty from Saigo Rovers. I think he had a very good season there, four clean sheets. They had some turn around Saigo. They looked like they were going to be in a relegation playoff, didn't they, when we resumed the league in August and ended up finishing in Europe. Obviously, he was involved in a couple of 21 squads, played that game against Iceland, didn't quite work out for him or Ireland. And obviously a dramatic game against Saigo there towards the end of the season where he saved the penalty and also got an assist in that game. Still only, as I mentioned, being in the 21, so he's still only in his early 20s. Very, very good prospect. Brian Murphy, same as Gary. Yeah, I thought he a fantastic season. Eight clean sheets from the 16 games he played this season. You could kind of really see how crucial he was to Warford and then games he was missing, particularly that Finn Harps game where they conceded a couple of poor goals. He's the captain of the team, so he's such a vital part of their unit. And he probably put in one of the best goalkeepers in the space of the season against St. Pat's in the opening night in Richmond Park. But same as Gary, top of the bill for me is Adam Manis from Shamrock Rovers. 13 clean sheets this season. Never conceded more than one goal in a game. And in general, since he rejoined the club two years ago, he's done little wrong. You think of all the goalkeeping problems that Shamrock Rovers had. It looked like for a while it could actually cost Stephen Bradley his job when he, let's be honest, didn't have any faith in either of his goalkeepers. He solved that issue. And is any wonder that Shamrock Rovers have now climbed the top of the three in Irish football and obviously also saved the penalty and scored in that dramatic European shootout back in August so for me it's, you can't look past uh, Adam Manis the Shamrock Rovers goalkeeper OK Paul Tierney give us your I suppose top three three two one um, being your top pick obviously number one yeah but I start with number three I go with Brian Murphy I think as you mentioned he had probably the goalkeeping performance of the season against Pats in the opening game and Waterford had a decent season all round. Everyone thought they might struggle at the start and mainly because of him and a lot of the other defenders as well. They got, they had a good season overall. Uh, I'd go for McGinty in second. I think even though he did make a couple of mistakes towards the end for both Ireland and Sligo, he was very good for them. I remember seeing them against Bowles at the start of the season and he pretty much kept them in the game from being five or six down. And I just can't look past Alan Manis in number one. He played all the games in an invincible season for the champions and he only conceded seven goals in the league. So can't look past Manis for me. Yeah, I think, you know, unanimous winner is going to be Alan Manis. When you look at the, I suppose, the stats, the season, as you say, seven goals conceded, 13 clean sheets. They're in a cup final. They done, I mean, he done well against Ace Milan as well in Europe. So, all these kind of things come into the equation. And if you're kind of looking at Rovers, they dominated overall. And ever since he's came in, I think Jerry said since two years ago, they have looked a different animal and have gone from strength to strength. They sorted out their goalkeeping issues. They addressed the fact that it was, going to, it was a it was a situation that they needed to fix. They've done that. 
they brought him in and you know I think the cup final was a, a, a big burden for them to get over and I think he was a big factor in that as well you know you think of the saves he made in the shootout um, yeah I think he's 39 now and he he doesn't look like he's getting on at all he actually looks like he could continue on for two or three more years easily in my opinion um, I think that's the thing with goalkeepers now as they're getting older they're continuing on you, you look at Buffon and the likes I'm not comparing him to Buffon in the sense of his ability but I just mean in terms of you know the length of time in which they're going to play it's great to see keepers carrying on that bit longer and you know while he's being that much of a man mounted for, for overs like I'd, I'd say every striker in the league hates coming up against him because he's it's just a big unit like he's a very nice guy as well but I'm sure uh, you wouldn't want to get on the, the wrong side. But a couple of, I suppose, um, sh- uh, sh- honourable mentions and shouts. Uh, Stephen McGuinness done really well for Bowles. You know, came in and covered for James Talbot for a large portion of the season. I think I had clean sheets for him. Uh, seven clean sheets in 10 games in the league. Came in uh, for James Talbot. I kept James Talbot out of the team. He even played in Europe as well. So I think he deserves, you know, to be playing 10 out of the 18 league games and doing as well as he did coming in from Cabo. I thought that was a, a good achievement for him. Then you have Brian Murphy, Ed McGinty as well. And Brendan Clark getting player of the season for, for St. Pat's. He's obviously gone on to Shells now as well, which is a massive signing for Shells in my opinion. And I'm sure all Shells fans have mm-hmm. to call myself. I'm sure, well, I know I'm quite happy with him there. I think that that's someone who could potentially be the difference between winning and the league or, or promotion or, or getting up and down and um, Brian Murphy you know there's all this stuff about Waterford at the moment you know are they even going to have a team next season by the way things are going but he was absolutely brilliant Jay you touched on the game against Seth Pats I was at that game with you and I thought he was outstanding that game and there was other games against Shells as well he was really really good so I think if you're just looking for an out and out winner yes Alan Manis. Um Gary Rogers had an up and down season. I don't think, you know, <laughs> let's be honest, COVID hasn't helped anyone. And you know, we're kind of trying to decide over an 18 league game season is quite hard, but there's an obvious winner here in Alan Manis if you're kind of going by that. And I think, you know, it's unanimous and he's in our, in between the sticks for us of our team of the season. I think that's fair to say. Anyone disagree? No, we all we all picked him yeah. as number one, so we're off for a good start here and all in agreement anyway. Ten more places to go, let's see how we get on. Yeah, so so we're gonna break this up into four three three formation. So that's been our goalkeeper. So make sure you stay tuned and check out for the rest of the positions as we'll be moving on to left back. 